All right, hi, this is Mr. Scott. I'm going to show you how to do the uh, titration of iodine with starch and vitamin C. So um, I've got my burette here. I've already cleaned it, uh, just as I showed you in the last clip. And then I've uh, taken my iodine solution right here, and I've carefully poured it into my burette. Now, you don't need to fill it all the way up, okay? Um, you can fill it however high you feel comfortable. Uh, if you're on the shorter side, you can use a funnel at the top, and that way you're not nervous about spilling all over the tube or yourself with the iodine. Uh, once again, it doesn't matter how much you have in there, but one thing you do want to do is write down to the nearest hundredth um, how much iodine you have in the tube. So right now, as I look at this um, iodine that I have in there, I have 39.80, so I want to make sure I have my lab sheet or my data table nearby and I'm going to write down that number 39.80 milliliters always taking it to the hundredth even though it looks like it's right at 0.8 I'm going to say 0 0.80 because I want to take it out to the hundredth that's one of the things or one of the reasons why this burette is so expensive is you're you're paying for the precision in the burette so it's going to go all the way to the hundredth um, the other thing you might want to do is you might want to let a little bit of the iodine run through the tip of the burette. So I'm just gonna take my uh, beaker that I had the iodine in, just let a little run through. And now, of course, I gotta re-record where I'm at because now I've lost a little bit of iodine. So I'm gonna say I am at 40.20. So I'm gonna write that number down, 40.20. Now what you're gonna do with your vitamin C samples, first you're gonna try uh, a sample of ascorbic acid that your teacher has made. So I have some ascorbic acid right here, made two liters worth. I'm gonna get five milliliters of this and put it into an Erlenmeyer flask. Your Erlenmeyer flask looks like this. One of the reasons why we use an Erlenmeyer is so that you can put it underneath the tip of the burette and it's designed so that you can swirl it and none of your um, titrant is gonna come out uh, into onto the floor or anything like that. So it's a nice little design of that flask. So I'm gonna get five milliliters of ascorbic acid and I'm gonna get five milliliters of water and you've gotta have an indicator so that it turns purple. Um, the indicator I'm gonna use is starch. All right, starch is right here. I'm gonna use three drops of starch. Uh, most people use between three and five drops. I'm gonna use three drops of starch, but don't forget to add that indicator, otherwise you're never gonna see a color change. All right, so here I go. All right, back here, you can see, I'm gonna lay this on the level surface here. I know the numbers probably look reverse in the camera here, but I basically got 5.0 milliliters of vitamin C. I'm gonna go ahead and add five mils of distilled water. So you notice I'll get up to the 10 mark here. So wanna make sure you're reading the bottom of the meniscus. All right, so now I'm at 10.0 milliliters. I'll turn that around. Looks like I'm a little shy, so I'm gonna add another drop or two. Okay, that should do it, so I'm at 10.0. What am I gonna add, though? I have gotta make sure that I put this into the Erlenmeyer flask, and I've gotta add something else. What have I not added yet? All right, if you mentioned the indicator you're right on, I gotta add the starch. So I'm gonna add three drops of the starch. Two, three, okay. So I'm gonna swirl that around a little bit. And now I'm ready to get started. So I've got this just high enough so that the tip of the burette is not going to get caught up in my Erlenmeyer flask. And I can pull away my Erlenmeyer flask whenever I'm done with the titration. So you're gonna open the valve here, let your iodine go, and you generally want just a nice drop by drop addition of the iodine till you're certain of the number that you're looking for. So you're just gonna drop, drop it in there and you can swirl as it's dropping in there. Okay, as you start to get closer, you'll start to notice the darker color persisting a little bit longer as you swirl. So you wanna keep on going. As soon as you notice it start to get color change and it's persistent no matter how much you swirl, um, it still stays, you get this lightish purple, then you're done and you've reached what's called the end point. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, hello. So uh, I finally finished with my titrations and I don't know how well you can see, but 
I started out with something that was colorless. Now I've got just a light, light purple. I know it looks a little darker in the camera, but you want to stop at the lightest purple that you can. I'll turn a little bit. It still looks dark into the camera, but basically I've stopped at the first sign of purple where it persists, um, and that's called the end point. Now there's a few last things that you want to do for the calculation. You want to record where you are, where you are, are at now with the burette in terms of how much iodine. So right now I'm at 42.20, 42.20. So now I'm gonna subtract from that where I started from with my burette. So I don't know if you remember there, but I was at 40.20, 40.20. So 42.20 minus 40.20 is 2.00 milliliters. You wanna record it to the nearest hundredth. So I used exactly 2.00 milliliters to titrate five milliliters of ascorbic acid or vitamin C. So you practice with this ascorbic acid, then you'll try it with uh, various juices that have a little bit of color to begin with. So you might try it with your teacher's orange juice, or you might try it with your teacher's uh, cranberry juice, anything that has vitamin C or ascorbic acid in it. Uh, and you'll practice with those samples and then you should be uh, getting your sample ready at home and you're eventually going to bring in a couple of samples that you've um, brought in from home. One sample that you've left in the fridge the whole time, the other sample that you've exposed to either light or heat or air and your teacher will talk more to you about that. You bring that in and that'll be kind of like the final project. All right, thanks for watching. All right, just to finalize the process here, I'm gonna take my iodine left in my burette, make sure the valve is closed. I'm gonna take the beaker of iodine, I'm gonna pour that back in. Now, all of it doesn't come racing down until you tilt it and then open the valve. Now, you might be able to see a little bit more run down in there. Now, I'm gonna close that valve, and then don't forget now, I've gotta clean that burette out, so I'm gonna hold that over the sink. I'm gonna take my distilled water, and I'm gonna shoot some distilled water in there, rotate the burette so that I get it nice and clean. And you can see that going into the sink there. Let it run for a little bit. Turn it upside down, let it run out. Okay, so it's nice and clean. And then don't forget, valve's gotta be in the upright position or open. I've got my uh, burette upside down and I'm gonna let the air dry overnight or for the next class. All right, if you've watched these videos uh, before class here, as soon as your teacher sits down, um, you need to say, the eagle has landed. The eagle has landed. They'll know you're ready for a bonus stamp. Everybody else will think you're crazy.